In this video on C-sharp basics, let's talk about the try-catch block. So a try-catch block performs a block of code, and if an error occurs while that code block is being performed, then other actions can be performed instead. So let's take a look at the syntax of a try-catch block. First, you're going to have your try statement with a scope of what the code should be that is attempted. If there is an error within the try block of code, then the catch method will execute. Now the catch method accepts something called a parameter, which is a type of exception. And we've named the exception that it catches ex. If we had some code in here, let's say int x equals zero, then we try to define y as being equal to seven divided by x, we should get an error because seven divided by zero is going to lead to a division by zero exception. This is what's called throwing an error. Now, since an error gets thrown, that error can actually be placed into this ex object that we've defined here inside of our catch method. So now ex is the actual exception error. From there, we can actually pull different properties from the error. And one of those properties is called message. And this gives us a detailed description of what the error was. Let's take a look at some code to see what this looks like. So inside of my main method here, I'm gonna start out by typing try, and we'll see that IntelliSense actually gives us a code snippet. And code snippets are very handy because now I can just select the code snippet I want, and I can either select it using the mouse here, or I can hit tab tab if it's already highlighted, and that will fill out all of the code that Visual Studio already anticipates that I'll be needing as part of that code snippet. Now up here in my try scope, I'm gonna go ahead and define int x and assign it an initial value of zero. Next, let's go ahead and define another int, we'll call it y, and we'll set its value to seven divided by x. Now let's go down to the catch block and here you can see that by default, it only puts in that there's going to be some sort of exception. I'm gonna go ahead and label this exception that it receives with ex, and that's going to now be a named object that is going to hold the information about an exception if there is one that is thrown by the code inside of the try block. Now something that a catch block can also do is re-throw an error. So it could throw a new error if I wanted to, and I could define one here. But in this case, I want this to be the end of the line for my try catch. I don't want to throw another error back up. So what we're doing here is we're actually catching the error and making sure that it doesn't go all the way up to the user as some sort of issue that's going on with the application. We are handling it internally within the application. This prevents the application from fully shutting down unexpectedly on the user. Now I do want to tell the user that there's been some sort of problem. So we'll go ahead and do a console dot right line. And we'll say error, because we want to indicate to them on this console dot right line that there has been an error. And we'll go ahead and concatenate to this, the ex dot message property. And the message property is going to be a detailed description of what the error is. So let's go ahead and end the statement there. And after our try catch block, let's go ahead and do a console.read line. And let's go ahead and save this and let's try running it. So our application is written to the console window error attempted to divide by zero. Now you can perform whatever logic that you want inside of the catch block. It doesn't have to be some sort of message to the user. Perhaps you want to go back and retry what's inside the try catch block by having some sort of uh, go to jump statement. But typically you're just going to want to catch the error, perhaps log it and then move on.